My talented niece Cameron was one of the leads in Freaky Friday that I watched last week at Kent State University. And while watching it, a couple things struck me. What great therapy would be if we could actually pull that off, okay? It's a good metaphor, but I want to talk about Freaky Friday as it relates to the world that we're living in. If you know the, the storyline, there's a daughter and a mother who argue a lot, and they end up switching roles. And they learn a lot about each other when they switch roles, right? And by the end of the movie, they come together, kumbaya, it's all well and good, because they lived each other's lives, okay? Well, it's a great metaphor. We're going to talk about why that is specifically and why it'd be wonderful if we could somehow do that in this world and why we all need to, to think about switching roles with each other before we judge so quickly. One of the songs in Freaky Friday is somebody has got to take the blame, okay? And that's one of the most dysfunctional ways we live, the, live in this world. It's a funny song in the musical, but most of us live our lives that way, looking for someone to blame. Well, there's a Chinese proverb that says, we're all on the same journey. Those who blame others haven't started. Those who blame themselves are halfway there, and those who blame no one have arrived. So blame is an issue according to that proverb, and it's very clear. A lot of people don't advance in their journey when they spend time blaming others. They're not trusting ultimately what's happening to them in the world, and we have to learn how not to do that. Then we get to our, a phase where we just blame ourselves, and that's not enough either. We have to learn how to get ourselves out of the way to get to where we want to go. Well, last time uh, we had a lecture, I left my wonderful drawing up here. I'm so proud of this stick figure drawing. I also do a, drew a stick figure animal here. We'll get to that in a minute. But this stick figure drawing was about Michelangelo and how uh, he had to chisel David out of this block of marble. And at the end, he had this perfected sculpture. And that's a metaphor for us. All of us have the light. All of us have the spiritual essence inside of ourselves, a little piece of God, if you will. And what we're doing is chiseling away layers of the ego. We're getting rid of resentment and shame and impatience and fear and ignorance and things like that, and judgment and blame. And the more you chisel away at that, the more those pieces of ego fall off of you. The more you get to a place where you realize, slowly over time, you have the light in you, which is exactly what Jesus said, you are the light of the world. In Hinduism, this is called Siddhi, the perfection is already in you. You don't have to go anywhere to find it. The grace has already been given to us. It's already there. The only work we have to do is actually eliminate or decrease the level of ego we have inside of ourselves. And that's often through blaming others and judging others. That's often how we express ego. And so if the goal is to get to this place where we are all connected as one through the spirit and the light inside of each one of us, and the way to get there is to peel back layers of the ego, well, that's where the Freaky Friday concept comes into play. And in examining the world and understanding the world based upon this drawing, now, can you all tell what this is? Come on, someone. Elephant. It's perfect, right? It's a stick figure elephant. And what are these guys? They're circus. They're circus people, okay. <laughs> these are the four blind men. And there's a, there's a uh, parable here that the, the reality is the story of the four blind men and the elephant. And what do we have? We have an elephant, which is very clear to us. And then you have four blind men, meaning they can't see it directly, at least. And each one of them is touching a different part of the elephant. This one's touching the tail, this one's touching one of the legs, this one's touching an ear, and this one's touching the trunk. If you ask each of the uh, blind men what is it they're touching, this one who's touching the tail might say he's touching some sort of broom. This one's touching a leg, he might say he's touching a tree trunk. This one that's touching the ear might say he's touching some sort of fan. And this one who's touching the trunk might say he's touching a hose. Now, would each of them be right based upon what they're touching? Yes. Can they see the whole picture? No. Well, reality is like this elephant. It's a complex thing. There's a lot of different parts to it. Some people get put at the bad end of it, for sure. You know, others that we're all touching a different part of the elephant, so to speak, but we all think the part that we're touching is the correct one, right? That reality, I'm, you know, if I'm touching the tail, well, that's what reality is, this part that I'm touching. And this one would insist that it's the, uh, the fan or the ear, what, the, what they're touching. And the fact is, to understand reality is to have new eyes, have a, a look at this elephant from a different perspective and realize, sure enough, there's a lot more going on than just the part I'm experiencing. And that's truly learning how to look at another person's, uh, from another person's perspective. Madame de Stahl, a French uh, philosopher and writer from the, the 18th century, said, to understand everything is to forgive everything. 
Now, if we had a couple hours, we could go all through, all through all the physics of this, okay? But you don't need to go through all the physics. When Jesus says you should forgive because people are ignorant, well, that would be enough. See, this person who's never touched the tail or this person who's never touched the trunk wouldn't know that experience. And if you understood everybody's experience from the, the angle from which they experienced the world, you would understand why you need to forgive. To be clear, we have another video up on what forgiveness actually is. And it does not mean to let people out of jail. It does not mean to let uh, foreign countries invade us. That's not what it means. It does mean to understand I'm not, not going to let the energy or the negativity affect me in my journey towards recognizing and finding the Christ consciousness within. I can still find the light inside of me and fight the good fight. Okay? It does not mean you let people out of jail. It might. And it, doesn't, it does not mean you bake a cake for someone who stole your TV or anything like that. That's not what it means. It means to not be affected by it in such a way you add layers of ego back onto yourself. Okay? Forgiveness is forgiving energy, forgiving light, forgiving love to the other person. Perhaps you correct them along the way. So to understand everything is to forgive everything means I'm not going to be affected by your stuff on my journey. Why? Because it's my journey and now I don't need to blame you. I need to learn all the various virtues. I need to learn to be forgiving. I need to learn to be compassionate and understanding and wise and merciful and all those things. I need to learn how to recognize that I'm the light. And I also know that you're the light. I mean, if there's any teaching that, that's a very high level and hard for people to grasp, it's the fact that if you're the light of the world, you're the equivalent of where Jesus was. The ability to be Christ-like as well is what we're all aspiring to, again, whether we know it or not. And so to understand everything is to realize all of us are en route towards that journey. But all of us got screwed up different. All of us are looking at the world like the elephant from a perspective in which we can't see everything. And so to understand everything is to forgive everything is a great strategy if you recognize, if you could understand the pathology of everyone's life. If, you say, you were born in an impoverished area of the country versus in a very wealthy area of the country, well, those two people have different perspectives, of course. Are both of them working on the same spiritual thing? Yes, to discover the light within. Are they aware of that? Maybe not. And if what we do is spend time looking at each other and assessing ourselves physically that you're better off or you're worse off, that doesn't get any closer to the goal. If one of the ways to realize that you're the light is to love another as oneself, that's to truly put us in that exact same position of saying it doesn't matter where you're born or what your race is or your gender or anything like that even what your religion is. It's, you're the light, I'm the light, we're all the light, I'm going to see only the light in you, namaste. And that's understanding everything. What, everything else is immaterial. Another female poet, Mary Lathrop, in the poem, Judge Softly, said that we should walk a mile in his moccasins. Now, I've looked up, there's many different uh, ways of saying that phrase, don't judge a man until you've walked two weeks in his shoes or whatever, but that's the earliest uh, writing that I saw in the late 1800s. And she says we should judge softly. Well, Jesus says to judge correctly. And that is what we're talking about. We're all spiritual beings. We're being created, crafted into our, our spiritual selves. And we shouldn't judge unless we've walked a mile uh, in someone else's moccasins. The truth is, I shouldn't tell this guy about the nature of the world based upon what he's touching, nor should he tell me. If I want to understand the whole world, I should go experience what he's touching, perhaps. I'm like, oh, you're right. This does feel like a tree trunk. And if you could go touch every part of it, you'd eventually figure out, I think that's an elephant. Well, what if we could Freaky Friday ourselves? What if we could wake up in someone else's shoes? And what if you could experience life exactly as they've lived it? You know what? You'd think like them, or super close to like they think. And it's all spectrums of the world, right? All political sides, whatever you look at. All religions. And if I, if I woke up tomorrow and I was walking around in Syria and I adopted all the experiences of a person, of a Syrian, for example, I'd find myself probably thinking like a Muslim. That would make some sense, right? And if I woke up tomorrow in a political party that perhaps disagrees with me, now I love all politics, I don't think there's any arguing going on, but if I woke up and I felt my, like I was going to argue, I mean, I'd understand why that person thinks that way. Because I just lived their lives where I took on all the data and all the experiences that they had. When we have issues inside relationships or family members and friends and, and we get to arguing about things, it's really pretty silly because if you had lived that other person's experiences up to that moment, you'd understand why they saw the world the way they saw it. Does this mean you'd agree? Of course not. We already established if the goal is to find this light within, 
you could still debate with people, but you do so with respect. You do so with love and forgiveness, right? Like, well, no wonder this guy thinks the world is this fan, or this guy thinks that the world is a trunk or whatever, because that's all they they've touched so far. So in Freaky Friday, whenever the daughter and the mother switch roles, don't they end up learning a lot? Wow, I didn't realize life was that difficult to be a, a, a mother of a child or a, 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 to be a child in today's society, and, you know, a teenager in high school and all of that, with our various relationships and our various challenges and different issues. If we could wake up in a world and we actually got to live somebody else's perspective, uh, we'd have a different perspective as a result. This also reminds me of one of the uh, first only, and only episodes of Twilight Zone I ever saw. And it was an episode in which a guy was described as a bigot. He hated all, all people that were different than him. And he went into the Twilight Zone and he woke up and he all of a sudden found himself a, as a black man who was being chased around and, and harassed by a bunch of the white folk because he had just been racist. And now all of a sudden he got to experience the other side of it. And I remember thinking as a little kid, wow, if that's the way the world works, that's great. That's how it should be. If you spend a decent amount of your life hating on someone, you're going to wake up one day being that someone, so you could experience their side of it. And I sometimes think, how do we know that's not happening right now? How do you know that every night we go to bed, we don't wake up and we shift one spot to the left and you take on someone else's persona for a day? How would you know? You'd immediately take on all their personality and all their, their memories and all of that. And I'm like, that'd be pretty cool. I hope that's not what's happening, but it could be. But for sure, lifetime after lifetime, Eastern philosophies are filled with this. You, you'll end up taking on the experience of something you need in order to learn what you need to learn. It's terribly fair. And if you spend a lot of time in one life uh, behaving a certain way and looking at it a certain way, you're probably going to wake up in a next lifetime looking at it exactly the opposite. So that, what's the ultimate goal? Well, we got to get to a place where you don't blame anyone. You don't blame others, you don't blame yourself. And what happens at the end? That's when you've arrived. When you see all of us are one consciousness experiencing this element from different angles. The world is just love. It's just this giant loving energy organism of some sorts in which we're interacting with it. And each one of us got dropped into a different spot. Those who see the world that way, are able to treat each other like that, are the ones who have arrived. But any amount of blaming self or other, any amount... Did she just walk out? My white wife distracting me! <laughs> Bye, Don't edit that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if we end up seeing the world the way we need to see it, that all of us are experiencing it from a different angle, well, that's when we've arrived.